Vladimir Putin just made the worst attack on Ukraine and an evil move that could leave millions of people without food. The Biden administration is finally going to hold Ukraine accountable for every dollar and weapon we send them. And Biden is considering using the U.S. government to take over and nationalize all energy companies. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. Today is the last day of the $8,000 October giveaway. And I just want to thank Alex uh, Alberon from Dream Client Academy for his generous addition to this month's giveaway. Uh, I run my own Amazon business and Alex's company is handling everything for me. So if you've ever wanted to uh, own your own online business or Amazon store, I'll leave a link below and you can reach out to Alex for details. I know some of you have already signed up with him, and so that's very exciting. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you, Alex. President Joe Biden is reportedly outraged at oil companies after it was shown that they've capitalized heavily on the supply chain issues. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre stated energy companies are often quick to raise prices when the price of oil goes up, but slow to bring prices of gas down when the price of oil drops. We're seeing that again now with profit margins on a gallon of gas at the pump, well above typical levels. The company that made the most was ExxonMobil. Uh, they broke their own record by raking in $20 billion for the last quarter. Some Democrats are now suggesting President Biden use an executive order to nationalize big oil and have it take o be taken over by the federal government in order to lo lower prices. Uh, this would go against everything the United States stands for. Uh, but Democrats say now is the time for our party to take back the country and nationalize energy production and lower gas prices. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Should President Biden hijack big energy and big oil and become the chief energy operator of the country? Uh, or should he leave things alone and let these companies uh, govern however they want? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Paul Pelosi has successfully undergone surgery for his fractured skull after he became the victim of a home invasion at their home in San Francisco, California. Since the attack, both Democrats and Republicans are blaming each other. Republicans say crime is out of control in San Francisco, and Democrats say that uh, Pelosi was attacked because of Trump and because of negative rhetoric from Republican uh, government leaders. Um, I'll, I'll leave you to decide. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of the Pelosi's, but I never wish bodily harm or evil on anybody uh, on the planet. So uh, I'm glad to see that he is recovering from that. Now, Democrats uh, have heavily criticized former President Donald Trump for not saying uh, anything. He has now reacted by saying it's a terrible thing and that the crime in San Francisco is out of control. Uh, again, uh, CNN has you to believe that this was a Republican-led attack against the House Speaker's husband. Uh, but as we learn more, uh, the former romantic partner of the attacker says he was mentally ill, constantly paranoid, believed he was Jesus, but was uh, politically a left-leaner uh, and lived in San Francisco. And so there, there's a lot of confusion about what's really going on. At the end of the day, a, a human was attacked by another human. It's a, it's a horrible tragedy. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched one of his worst attacks against Ukraine with missiles and drones. Russia has continued to attack Ukraine's infrastructure. As of now, the capital city of Kyiv is mostly without power and water. Ukraine's foreign minister stated another batch of Russian missiles hit Ukraine's critical infrastructure. Instead of fighting on the battlefield, Russia fights civilians. It has been reported that 350,000 homes are now without power and 80% of citizens are without access to clean running water. When looking at Ukraine as a whole, 40% of the nation is now without power and we're going into winter. Uh, Putin is clearly using winter 
as a way to exacerbate or worsen the situation as they use military tactics to wipe out communication and critical infrastructure in Ukraine. Now, I have previously covered that ex-military commentators are saying the Russian military is much stronger than the media lets on, and they have said that Putin is waiting for winter to launch a full-scale attack, and that he will now begin to hit Ukraine where it hurts most by using drones and missiles from a distance. Up until now, they've been moving into the country. They believe now they will continue to attack Ukraine from a distance. NATO is terrified to cover the skies of Ukraine as Ukraine has uh, uh, requested because it will mean that they have officially entered the war. NATO would rather continue to use Ukraine uh, as a proxy war against Putin and against Russia. Um, my, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine that are caught in the middle of this. I mean, they're basically being used uh, as pawns uh, in a war game between NATO and Russia, uh, but Ukraine and their citizens are bearing the brunt of this horrible situation. Putin also put the rest of the world on high alert. Over the weekend, Ukraine launched a massive drone attack against Russian vessels in the Black Sea. This was supposed to be a sacred and protected area because of the, gre the grain agreement brokered between Turkey and Putin in July. Basically, Putin would allow Russia and Ukraine grain, oil, and other food to safely pass through the Black Sea and out to the world to avoid starvation and food shortages. Well, Ukraine has jumped the gun and uh, broke this agreement and took aim at Russian warships using nine unmanned military war drones. Putin says this is a major violation and said the peace agreement on the Black Sea and the grain vessels is off and that he will now use military force to seal off the Black Sea and control the food that moves in and out of the region. Russia also said they have evidence that the United Kingdom, not the United States, is behind the sabotage attack of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline and that Britain has now single-handedly caused the extension of this war and the escalation of this war. So basically, I, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of evidence. I'm just letting you know what's in the news. Uh, Putin and the Russian Federation Army are saying they have enough evidence that it was the United Kingdom that blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. The Black Sea situation is a big deal because hundreds of millions of humans depend on the food from Ukraine and Russia to survive. The United Nations says they will do all they can to broker peace with Putin and reimpose safety guidelines for the ships moving in and out of the Black Sea. So hopefully they'll be able to get this back on track um, you know, on one hand, I understand what's going on. Ukraine is under attack. Uh, they're being bombed and attacked and basically put back into the dark ages right as we enter into the winter months. However, on the other hand, they did agree not to attack Russia on the Black Sea because of how many people depend on Ukraine and Russia for food. So uh, in, in a bad military move, they have jumped the gun and now they've uh, basically undone all of the work that was done uh, for brokering peace and safe movement of these grain ships. The Biden administration is making a hard right turn on Ukraine. A five-page document has been released from the U.S. Pentagon demanding Ukraine share with the United States how U.S. taxpayer money is being spent and how U.S. weapons are being used. Russia has accused the United States of letting over a billion dollars of money and weapons end up in the hands of terrorists. The United States has not denied these allegations, but is now demanding accountability from Zelensky. Zelensky is not happy about the new move, but the United States is saying, moving forward, you want our money and our military equipment? We need to know how it's being spent. I mean, some of this military equipment was ending up on eBay or on the black, on the dark web, and people were buying rocket launchers. And I mean, it's crazy what was slipping into the hands of normal people. President Biden is accusing the Republican governor, Doug Ducey of Arizona, 
of trespassing, Biden said he wants this governor to immediately stop building the container wall to block illegal immigrants from getting into the United States, or he will have the federal government go after Governor Doug Ducey. Now, Doug Ducey said, we've done more to secure the U.S. border in 12 days than Biden has done in 12 months. So Biden is now saying, I'm going to sick the federal government on you and go after you, destroy the wall, get rid of it. And this, and this governor is saying, why do, you, why do you want so many illegals coming into the country? You have a constitutional duty to protect and defend the U.S. border. Uh, and now you're saying you're going to come after me. So it, it's turning into kind of an ugly situation down there on the southern border of Mexico and Arizona. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky contracted COVID not long after getting her final miracle vaccine booster. She then went on the miracle pill Plaxavid for a week, only to then test positive for COVID again. I wish her a speedy recovery. It's a good thing she has all of this miracle medicine from Pfizer. All right, now Elon Musk officially owns Twitter. He has made himself the sole board member of Twitter for now and says that he's going to make people pay $20 to verify that they are indeed a real human. Uh, the bots were furious and sent out millions of messages against Elon Musk. However, Musk says in order for Twitter to remain relevant, and profitable, he has to ensure companies wishing to spend marketing dollars on his platform that they have a good product and that their product and service is getting in front of real human eyeballs and not in front of millions of fake accounts and fake bots. The three major stock indexes are down today. However, many individual stocks are up, including Gold Royalty Company and Rio Tinto that I told you about last week. Also, AT&T took a 1% to 2% dip today, so you might want to keep your eye on that as a good purchase because they have such a healthy dividend right now. And let's be honest, AT&T is not going away. The need for ore and minerals is not going away. The need for gold is not going away. So you might want to check out these companies. Hedge fund manager Sharon Hill says her firm is switching to dividend-paying stocks and smaller companies with greater upside potential as their new move moving forward. This might be some good advice to follow. As you know, uh, if you've been in my community for a while, I'm a big fan of dividend paying stocks. If they do well, they share the money with you. And that's a big deal, right? So uh, anyway, just something you might want to look into. Um, even though stocks are down, these dividends have been paid like clockwork. And that's a big deal as you recover from this negative market. Lastly, a new study shows artificial intelligence or AI will soon be able to decode what animals and insects are communicating by di uh, d deciphering their language code. Pretty crazy, right? In the very near future, you might be able to communicate with your dog or your cat or bugs and cockroaches to see what it is they're really thinking because of AI technology. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will come on and share more with you. Make sure to take 20 seconds to register to be one of the winners of the $8,000 in cash and prizes. Casey and I are giving away thanks to generous video sponsors. 40 of you are going to win and several of you are going to win up to $500 in cash. You can spend it however you want and I will leave a link below. Also, thank you again to Alex Alberon from, um, uh, <laughs> for, for giving money so generously for this last month's giveaway. If you've ever wanted to own an online business or an Amazon store, take advantage of the free consultation that Alex is offering to my YouTube community only. Seriously, there's no charge. He knows not to pressure you. It's all about education and helping you decide whether owning an online business is right for you. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. I appreciate you being in my community. Make sure to check out this video and be subscribed to the channel. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by today, and I will see you on the next video.